doing my quarantine here behind bars in jail. Where's my uh, cellmate? Hey, cellmate. Where you at, cellmate? And scold my cellmate here. I don't want to break a protocol. Somebody will see it on video. That'd be all. Cheesemus. Look at that girl. She got too close to them children. Yeah. Told her. Get a little distance. Made them kiddos move down some more just now, too. Gotta keep that space. Here. In, in the jail cell. I think they counting the days. They're counting the days? Yeah. They always, they always uh, look the calendar. <laughs> uh, the little crew. Let me see if I can get y'all a better shot of the little morning crew here. Saying hello. Our visitors. Business in jail. There they are. <laughs> it's awesome. Melinda fixed them a little food and set it outside. I think it's kind of backwards, ain't it? The person in jail feeding the people on the outside of jail. I thought it was supposed to be the opposite. The people outside are supposed to feed the people in jail. Oh, it's just such a backward world these days. Just roll with the punches. We brought an old school game here inside one of the ballot buying boxes for the kids to play. They can play it inside the house once, once this lockdown, once this imprisonment is completed and we are paroled. We're in lockdown. Yeah, once, oh, once we're parolees, well then we're going to let the children play the old school twister game. How many of you all played this game right here when you were growing up? Comment down it below. Tell us about it, boy. And the other games that you like to play when you were growing up, too. Let's hear about it. Let's hear something positive. So everybody share what games you like to play as a kid growing up. Whether it be games like this or just games outdoors uh, running and playing. Let's hear about them. Let's hear about some wonderful stories right there. Just comment on it. Melinda, what kind of games did you play when you were growing up? Lots of games like that. Uh, run from your mama game? Yeah, run away, hiding, hiding, Hiding from your mama game? That's what I heard. Hiding sick for three days. Yeah. My mom chasing me. I have to deal with the same thing. And my mom can't, can't locate me. You know, sometimes I just hide under the house and sleep with there um, overnight. Yeah. I heard stories that you were so bad that she had to put you in a rice sack and hang you on a wall or a fence or a tree. To keep, no, keep you from running away. To keep you from running away. I heard this story. Yeah. Because you my were mom, from time you from the time that you were but little. Mom, no. Just I just tied you up and threw you on the floor. No, my like mom, a bag of potatoes. My mom tied me a rope in the pole. <laughs> she so, tied you to a yeah, pole, huh? In my leg so that I can so that I can go out. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of game did y'all play? I mean, I'm sure y'all didn't have stuff like this. Just the stick. You know, we call that one pikiao. You know, like we can make a lot of creating things. You know, like a wood and then you're going to do like that or, you know, you do like... You know, okay, so when you do like that, what do you do with it? Pick up. You know, you have a partner to so play that one. You know, like you need to do that stick and she need to be right there. And then when the... The stick drop where well, you know like far thought, away or yeah. close, you know you should need to be to be you know like you know throw it um, far so that he can hit the, the you know that line you know because oh so okay so it's kind of hard to explain it's hard to explain when you leave the main details out so you got this stick and there's a line far away there's no line but you just said to hit that line so a line is you know like so it's an invisible line. <laughs> hard to explain pick you you know like you have a stick like this and you're gonna do it like that okay and then when the where the you know the stick that one the first the where it lands ended, yeah, mm -hmm. it is the one that you step it there 
and you the one that the big stick that you that you use that one you put it here in the ground and then he, he gonna hit that one so if we gonna hit that you know you're the one to do it again but if not you know you should need to do it again and again there's a can game also yes like example it is the can you're gonna put the slipper like that and then you have a one more slipper and you're gonna you need to knock the can out from underneath yes, the other slipper the can, yes and then what's the point in that what happens when the can goes if you knock that if, if they knock that one you need to to chase them you know like run so hard yeah. to explain you know no so so you, so you knock the can out from underneath the slipper and then you chase them who's them huh? the people that you, your playmates so what about the can what happens you, to it you are the one to look up the, I mean, it's so hard to explain. It. Never mind. I need to Google. I need to. I need to, I need to you need Google Translate. Yes, you Google Translate. I know <laughs> <laughs> I, I taste the blood now. Well, I'm going to tell you, I sit and watch some of these games on the beach, and I watch them do some of this stuff. I can't make any sense of it, boy. I can't make any sense of it. I just look at it, and like they're playing. They're having fun. I guess that's all that matters. Can I just speak my language so that I don't need to be... Okay, go. Okay. So, maano ikaw, ma bolata, tapos si ano nanda, i... i go on. Tapos man sa... Cheesy. Hey, man, just hear it. Finish it. No way. Well, you know, my wife, she's always cooking. Y'all say, James, why are you so fat? Well, right there's the reason why. <laughs> there it is, right there. Killing me softly with her cooking. Yeah. I love cooking. <laughs> uh, so, what we got going on right here, Mel? What'd you cook here? We call this one a bear gourd. Bitter gourd? Yeah, bear gourd. Yeah. With eggs you know, and the tomatoes. So that looks pretty good. And these are the ones your mom raised in a flower pot in yes, front of her yeah. little Sorry Sorry store there, right? That's right. And she's excited to share that one with us. Yeah. First time my mom's ever done that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She grew these over there in front of her Sorry Sorry store out of flower pots. So and that's yeah, pretty cool. And she was proud to give it. Wish I had a picture of that before Melinda chopped it up. But it's a long life plant. A lot of you Filipinos, y'all know what it is. What else we have right and, here? And uh, this one is a transfer transparent fish, the color white one. See, we call that but one what's a bulinaw. But what's the name of the dish? Bulinaw. We call this one kinilaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's those little small white fish that we like so much. Yes. Yeah, yeah they're and, delicious. And you can add uh, coconut and I add uh, cucumber. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty good. Ginger. Something else in there. Is there some onion or something? Yes, in there? onion, ginger, and uh, chili. And yes. some chilies. Yes, the fresh chilies. And so, are these fish right here? Are they cooked or are they raw? They're raw. Yeah, and they're delicious raw too. Those little white fish are so clean and so nice. Mm -hmm. That's the ones we showed in some other videos before. They're almost transparent. You can almost just look right through the fish. That's right. Super clean, mm -hmm. nice flavor too. And then can't be a Filipino if you don't eat pork. <laughs> pork chop. If you don't have some grilled pork or some lechon, well, then you ain't a Filipino. <laughs> so uh, here we are right here. She cooked up some grilled pork and chopped it up. So for you all that watch this and y'all not familiar with Filipino ways and how they do things, there's something unique they do here when they cut meat. They cut it up with scissors. In the U.S., we're big about, you know, you'll have a whole pork chop and you'll have a knife at your plate and a fork and you'll be chopping that joker up yourself. But here, they take a pair of scissors to cut meat up and uh, it's pretty cool. And they'll chop it up and go ahead and make it into bite-sized pieces and uh, easier to handle that way. And they'll have a little soy sauce, of course, to the side for dipping it in and off. But that's their way of doing things. Um, yeah, right there. That's what I'm talking about with the chili in it. Um, you that have never experienced Philippines, they give you a little insight of information. And for you that are Filipinos or are already in a relationship with a Filipino, 
married or whatever, you're going to know that one well. That hit right at home. Yeah. A little bit of calamansi, calamansi, however you want to pronounce it. And sometimes I put a little vinegar in that too. Yeah. Well, one more thing I want to cover before I sit down and make a little piggy piggy out of myself is uh, corn. Let's talk corn for a second. And I said corn, not porn. We'll have corn porn. Okay. Some of you will talk about that Filipino corn that it don't have no flavor and this and that. And why can't you get like the American corn? And I've tried to comment back several times when people are saying that, that yes, you can get sweet American type corn here, that they are growing it in places now. And one of our neighbors brought this to Melinda. He's uh, living at a farm out here in a province area right now, and they're growing this nice sweet corn right here. And he wanted to bring some here to us. Of course, we paid him for it, and he's pretty excited to share this. Hey, Mel, would you mind peeling some of this back where they can see it? Take this one right here and pull that shuck back, and let's give them a look at it. You can use this for it. <laughs> Get that run away away from you. Wow. Is this the part where I should put in 20 minutes later? Now, look at that. Wow. That is beautiful isn't it i mean gorgeous mm -hmm. there you go pull that on back Ooh, you wow. see that and this isn't that old tough corn that i hear some of you complain about i mean these are nice yeah. big ears um if i had something to compare it for size so you'll know well maybe here's like a coffee cup you know and you can see this is a nice big full size ear right there very very nice and they are growing this more and more throughout the Philippines. They actually made some deals with some U.S. universities that they took um, some corn plots, some fields, and they would bring uh, even that uh, genetically modified corns and all here that we have in the U.S. and do test crops with it. And it grew like crazy here in the Philippines in the soils. And they have now picked up on it more and more and more and it's really increased their production and their yield so they've been very happy with it so things are changing here uh, some people don't believe in the genetically modified and some people do but most of that sweet corn you're eating in the u.s is a genetically modified corn and it is very delicious no matter what you have to say about it so there it is right there Looking it good. can be gotten here it is grown here Maybe just where you're at or something it's not, but ask and seek it out and you might find it. Well, time for me to sit here and eat. So I appreciate y'all looking at that. Uh, to my subscriber, Daryl, that's my number one biggest commenter on my videos. Who's your daddy? Mm -hmm. Right here. This is for you, Daryl. A little bit of food tour before we eat. All right, everybody, take care, and we'll see you.